One thing people don't often know about flying is that you can start at any age. I personally started at 14, but I know people who have begun earlier. In any case, a lot of people don't know that all it takes to start flying is dedication. I want to ask one of the other pilots of the airfield, Simeon, a few questions about his experiences flying as a pilot. Alright, what's your name? Hi everyone, I am Simon, and I am a pilot out of the Stowe Miniman Airport. Alright, so when did you start flying? I started flying in 2011. Um, yeah, winter of 2011, I started flight lessons in Fitchburg, at the Fitchburg Airport. And I got my license about a year afterwards. I had roughly 40 hours, 42 hours, somewhere around there. So I've really been officially licensed for about three years, two years now. What got you interested in flying? What got me interested in flying? Um, I had a co-worker of mine uh, at one of my older jobs who, uh, who used to be a Navy pilot. And he used to fly uh, F4Us and T2s on uh, the USS Lincoln. And he then, after he got out of the Navy, he ended up instructing actually at this airport back in the 70s. And, and he, he told me about it, he got me into it. He ended up having me uh, fly with him a couple of times. And then um, my best friend's dad ended up uh, taking flying lessons about 2010. And he used to be a glider pilot. But he wanted to get his private pilot's license, so uh, once, one time I went to uh, his house and uh, kind of started talking to him about it. And he told me how, you know, how it's done, what the cost is, and how you get into it. And then I, I went to the airport and I was like, hey, I want to learn how to fly. And then we ended up learning how to fly. It's been a good time since then. All right, how do you think someone could start flying? Uh, starting to fly. Um, well, it's, I mean, the easiest option is go to your local airport, see if they have a flight school. Uh, you do need to be physically fit to fly, um, so there are some requirements for that. Um, and, then, and then basically just go to the airport, find out there's a flight school, schedule some classes, see if you like it first, you know, do an introductory flight lesson. Um, those are usually pretty short, but you figure out whether you like it or not pretty quick, and most people like it a lot. Uh, so it is fun. And do you think it's worth it? Oh, I think it's absolutely worth it. Um, you know, when you when you get your license, um, you kind of limited it. You know, what time and what kind of weather you can fly into. Uh, Most people cool kind of weather, but um, it's a it's a pretty good opportunity. You, you know, if you take friends up, it's usually they end up uh, owing you forever and ever that you took them flying. Uh, and you can you can go a, a lot more places, and it's, there's a lot more freedom to where you can go. Uh, I took some friends last year. We took off from Fitchburg, and we uh, we ended up going down to the Cape. And it took us about 40 minutes, which would have taken about three hours in a car. And um, and you know you, you fly over everything. You don't have to worry about traffic. Uh, I've gone to the islands down by the Cape too, at Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. Um, and it's just it's a lot quicker to get there. Um, and you, some fun thing is, you know, if at your airport the weather's not that good, but you can take off and fly down somewhere to the islands. It's usually clear and hot weather. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely worth it. Um, yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Fire off. Yeah. Among many other things, becoming a pilot is difficult, but it's also very rewarding. On a calm day, nothing matches the feeling of getting up in the plane. So, what was your first experience with the plane? First experience with the plane. Um, let me scan my library of memories. I was, uh, let's see, I was three years old. Uh, so I grew up. I grew up in Europe, Eastern Europe, and my uh, my father took me across from our house. There was there were some nice woods, and there was train tracks going through, and they were going to film an old war movie then. And my dad, you know, he took me out to the woods to to watch the movie being filmed, and so he's carrying me along, and he told me to be really quiet. Now I'm three. I'm not really going to listen to him. Um, but, you know, they're filming the movie and there were soldiers getting on and off the, the train. And then I'm 
not even paying attention to the movie, but I'm looking up in the sky and I saw a jet flying overhead and I knew what an airplane was, so I looked up and I screamed at the top of my lungs, airplane! And then we got kicked out and we ruined the film and we got kicked out and we had to go. And that's probably my earliest memory of being in an airplane. But I, I didn't fly in an airplane up until I was about 10 to actually come to the States. All right, uh, what are some long trips you've done? Long trips I've done. Um, well, I did my, when I was a student, I did a uh, long cross-country flight, which is kind of one of your requirements to get your uh, private pilot's license. And uh, that was a good trip. That was about maybe three hours in a little two-seater. Um, and I actually went up around New Hampshire and then came back. But I went to about six airports. I went up as far as uh, Laconia. I went to Lebanon, New Hampshire. Actually, I landed at Towered Airport there. And then there, actually, if, uh, if you end up taking your long cross country to Lebanon, they give you a tiny little bottle of maple syrup for going solo cross country to Lebanon. And then I came back around, went down south to uh, Keene, and then back to Fitchburg at the time. And then uh, some other trips I've done. Actually, I, I took that plane, if you want to film that plane. I did my long cross country in that plane. Uh, but I did take that plane. I had to go get that from Michigan, upstate Michigan. And that was about 700 miles. It took me two days. Uh, I got stuck in weather a couple of times. I couldn't fly because of the weather. Uh, and then uh, about three weeks ago, I took that plane, or similar, similar plane to that plane over there, uh, from Oklahoma back to here. And that took three days. Um, that was a fun flight. Yeah, that's my that's a couple of long trips, and hopefully I'm going soon to Florida to pick up another plane to bring it here. I hope. All right. So how do you get to fly different kinds of planes? Uh, so I am licensed to fly single engine, piston, uh, land airplanes, uh, which is any tricycle type plane which has basically the main gears and then a wheel in the front like those two um, something else this is a tail dragger airplane which has a wheel in the back the controls are different uh, as far as your takeoffs and landings and the way it lands uh, but this is an endorsement it takes about you know between five and ten hours after you've gotten your license uh, to learn how to fly one of those and then you know there's uh, seaplanes which are an endorsement as well um, those take about five to ten hours um, and then there's different ratings the different ratings uh, after you get your private pilot's license there's an instrument rating which allows you to fly through clouds uh, in instrument meteorolo meteorological conditions uh, so basically through clouds um, so you're not limited by flying only daytime nice weather or nighttime nice weather um, and then there's multi-engine we don't have any multi-engine airplanes around uh, but multi-engine takes I think 50 hours could be wrong on those uh, but that allows you to fly more than one engine uh, and then there's you know there's different things like pressurized uh, High performance complex airplanes, which has uh, uh, gears that retract in the wings and the and the fuselage, uh, and then you go up to jets, uh, and those you know you go up to jets, then you need a uh, airline transport pilot rating, which allows you to fly for an airline. Uh, and that's a lot of hours. Airline transport pilot rating, you need uh, 1,500 hours. It's a lot of hours. But you do need those. You need the private pods. After you get that, you get your instrument. Uh, then you can get a commercial rating. And with a commercial rating, you can either instruct and teach people how to fly. Uh, you can work for, you know, you, know, you can fly skydivers around, uh, do some glider towing, uh, fly banners around. Those are fun. And, uh, and then after that, if you build it up to the 1500, you can get your ATP rating and fly jets and fly for an airline. All right, thanks. No problem. Anytime. 
As I said before, there's nothing that can match the feeling of flight, and I encourage anyone with any questions or interest about aviation or becoming a pilot to either contact to me or contact the local ground school. This has been Ian Uso reporting for Native Grand Hog News. So what happened? So part three, are you yeah. recording already? Yeah. Oh, okay, so part three of our how to be a pilot lesson. Um, when I was flying back from Oklahoma, this is by no means dangerous, but it does happen. Um, we ended up taking off from Oklahoma, we had a bird strike. Uh, but basically, I didn't see it. I was in the pilot seat, but I was looking elsewhere. You missed and out. My co-pilot saw it, and he said that it basically hit the cone, and then it kind of went over here, uh, the bits and pieces of the bird. Uh, but then we ended up flying it for eight hours, and it was fine. Uh, we ended up landing. We had a little crack in the cone, which in a little piece was kind of flapping around, but we ended up getting that fixed. So. Bird strikes happened. They're not necessarily dangerous, unless it goes right through your windshield. Then Bug, it's not good. Bugs, too. But bugs, too, yeah. Bugs, a lot of bugs. Bug, uh, that might go through the windshield, Yeah, too. you'll hear it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>